In the middle of the 9th century, a great empress was reigning in Constantinople, the capital of the Roman Empire. Her name was Theodora, and she descended from the land of Paphlagonia in Asia Minor. After the early passing of her husband and emperor Theophilos, Theodora led the government of Byzantium for 13 years, from 842 until 855 acting as regent and co-ruler for her underage little son Michael, the third of his name. In 1830, Theodora married the iconoclast emperor Theophilos. Theophilos chose her to be his lady and empress during a bride show that had been ordered by his stepmother Ephrosyne. In this matrimonial contest joined noble daughters from all edges of the empire, but after great thought, Theophilos handled the golden apple of Paris to Theodora. Theodora belonged to a line of ardent iconophiles and opposed the iconoclast persecutions unleashed by her husband. Still, she kept her adoration for the Christian icons in confidence, and with the aid of her mother Theocteste, she made sure to nourish her children with iconophile judgments facing the will of Theophilos. Thus, all her daughters were raised as friends of the icons by their devoted grandmother. Theophilos passed away in 842. Theodora, followed by a group of advisors, received command of the Roman state. The first settlement of her government was to convene an ecclesiastical synod in Constantinople and to officially restore the veneration of icons. The conclusions of the iconophile Seventh Ecumenical Council that the Empress Irene of Athens had assembled before one century were reconfirmed. The synods that condemned the use of icons were anathematized, and throughout the empire it was announced the triumph of orthodoxy and the return of the icons in the life of the church. This day is still, even today, celebrated in the Orthodox Church and the Eastern Catholic Churches as the Sunday of Orthodoxy. After the rise of Theodora to the regency of the Empire, the Abbasid Caliphate immediately unleashed a great naval raid of 400 Romans so to intimidate the new regime in Constantinople, currently led by a woman. However, a sea storm destroyed all the Arab fleet that was thrashed at the Cape of Heldonia, on the shores of Asia Minor. Later, the hagiographer of Empress Theodora would attribute this great Islamic defeat to a miracle made by the Empress. For about two decades, the island of Crete was controlled by a group of Arab pirates from Andalusia, today Spain. They had transformed Crete into a center of piracy and terrorism for the Greek islands of the Aegean Sea. The Arabs unleashed horrifying raids in the Aegean, the shores of the Peloponnese and Asia Minor, even as far as Italy. Isles were completely desolated and populations were forced to relocate so to escape slavery. In the year 843, Theodora resolved to launch an aggressive campaign against the emirate. She dispatched a great army under the leadership of her trusted advisor, Theoctistos, so to bring Crete once again into the hands of the Romans. Theoctistos was able to storm and conquer the island in a short time, to the excitement of the government in Constantinople that appointed a new Roman strategos to rule Crete. However, some deceitful information that wanted Theodora to have Theoctistos deprived of imperial favor reached him while he was fighting in Crete. The worried Theoctistos abandoned the island with a great part of the imperial forces and returned to the capital. The Arabs of Crete regrouped and managed to defeat and slay their remaining Roman units and to murder their general Sergius. But Theodora's last words were not yet to come. In the next years, she decided not to strike directly the Emir of Crete, but instead 
to hit the Caliphate in Egypt, the promised land where the Arabs of Crete used to supply their emirate with weapons and equipment for their corsair raids. At 853, the Roman war dromans appeared unexpectedly on the shores of Egypt, where they plundered and conquered the great city of Damietta. The citizens fled and the city was surrendered in flames. Later, the Roman sailors moved against Ustur, an Arab stronghold of Egypt, where the Caliphate preserved sieging machines and artillery for Crete. From this campaign, the imperial troops took thousands of captives and confiscated a great number of weapons and supplies that the Caliph had stored for Crete. The warehouses and the city of Ustam itself were burned. At 854, one year later, the Romans returned to plunder Damietta, and at 855, the imperial navy raided once more the Egyptian shores. However, the Arab vandalism on the Aegean would not cease, and for this reason, Theodora established a new naval center, the theme of Kiveriotis, on the shores of Asia Minor, were stationed in imperial fleet. This new sea theme managed to control the Arab piracy in the waters of the Aegean. On the eastern borders of the empire, the greatest enemy for Theodora was Umar al akta the emir of Melitini. At 844, ahead of a great army, Umar aspired to campaign against Constantinople herself. Theoctistos, in command of a large army, left the capital and marched to fight with the emir. The Roman and Arab armies confronted each other at Western Asia Minor at the so-called Theme of Optimate, in a district known as Blackwater. In this confrontation, Theoctistos was overwhelmed, and Umar plundered the shores of the Sea of Bosporus. During the skirmish, many Roman soldiers abandoned Theoctistos and joined the Emir, thus helping the Arabs succeed. The motivation for this domestic treason was the promise of plunder. The Arabs of Melitini were also in an alliance with the Paulicians, a Christian group that worshipped the preachings of Apostle Paul and lived on the eastern lands of the empire. Paulicianism denied the material earthly world and disapproved of the homage of Christian icons, and for this reason, in the past, they had warmly supported iconoclast emperors. Paulicians also held an excellent relationship with the Caliphate. As citizens of the Roman Empire, they terrorized the populations and towns of Eastern Asia Minor and had enslaved many Orthodox Catholic Christians that they would later sell to the slave markets of the Islamic society, such as Baghdad. Theodora knew that if she stopped Paulicians, she would deprive the Emir of Melitini of a great source of manpower for his raiding pursuits. In this spirit, she gathered a great army under the command of three generals, Leo Argyros, Andronikos Dukas, and Sudales. The imperial momentum was the following. They would either convert to the Orthodox faith and live peacefully inside the empire, or vanquish. Indeed, the Roman soldiers slew thousands of Paulicians, hunted them far from the imperial borders, and confiscated their properties, thus crushing their domination in the east. Many survivors managed to escape in Muslim lands, and mainly found refugee in the domain of the emirate of Melitini. The emir offered them fiefs near his borders, so to shield his country from future imperial charges, and also to employ them in future raids against the Roman realm. During the next years, the Paulicians from the city of Tefriki, their new capital of power, unleashed numerous raids against the empire. At 855, just one year before she retired from politics, Theodora organized a counterattack. 
Indeed, at 856, Roman troops invaded the emirate and ravaged the Arab cities of Samosata and Amid, and also Tefriki, the Paulician metropolis. The empire received 10,000 prisoners from this invasion. In the year 838, the Caliph al-Mutasim, a head of strong Islamic forces, conquered and razed to ashes the grand Greek city of Amorio, one of the most prestigious towns of the Roman world. Amorio was the homeland of the contemporary dynasty that ruled the empire, the birthland of Emperor Theophilos. The Caliphate enslaved thousands of Christians and made massive massacres of its citizens, to the point that the city never recovered from this shock. Yet, the most notable lords and officials of Amorio were drawn to Syria, so to await the ransom of their families. Theophilos had sought to negotiate with the Caliph the release but his death repealed all the progress. After the assumption of power by Theodora, the new caliph, al vathik sent her a momentum. She would either pay an extravagant amount of gold to the caliphate, or the high hostages of Amorio would suffer death. Theodora regarded the Arab financial demands as too extreme for her country, and declined a deal with the Abbasids. The answer of the Caliph was the martyrdom and the killing of the 42 Amorian lords. The martyrs of Amorio were murdered after they refused to renounce Christ and convert to Islam. The Empress and the Patriarchate of Constantinople made sure to declare those 42 unfortunate men as saints. And even to this day, the Orthodox Church remembers the memory of the 42 Amorians with tears of grief. The city of Tarsus stood at the entrance of Syria. It was a city located in a very strategic point, at the entry of Levant. It was ruled by an emir, a subject of the Abbasid Caliphate. From his lair in Cilicia, in a spirit of pure jihad, the emir of Tarsus used to pass the Cilician gates and make terrible raids on the provinces of Asia Minor. Indeed, Ali the Armenian, the emir, acting under the orders of the caliph, made a large winter raid against the wounded city of Amorio, but he suffered a devastating defeat at the hands of the strategos of Cappadocia, that hurried to confront him. The Arab defeat was so momentous that the Islamic raids coming from Tarsus faded away during the next years. From 851 to 853, for three years, Ali returned with annual constant forays in the Greek-Arab borders, but those expeditions brought no significant results. On the contrary, at 855, Theodora started her counter-offensive. The Roman phalanxes invaded Tarsus itself and plundered the capital of the emir. In this campaign, the imperial forces earned 20,000 prisoners. Theoctistos executed many of the captives after they refused to convert to Christianity, so to exact revenge for the martyrdom of the Amorian lords. Theodora, the iconophile Augusta, is remembered as a saint by the Orthodox Church and the Eastern Catholic ones. Her memory is honored every 13th of February, and her relics are preserved on the island of Corfu in the Ionian Sea, thus making her the only emperor or empress whose remainings are still saved after the fall of 1453. Thanks for watching Byzantine Real History. You can subscribe to our Imperial channel for the next videos to come.